good evening, everyone here in the audience and at home watching us uh, via our live stream. Uh, my name is Dr. Hans Stefinski. I'm the school superintendent. And this is the third uh, public session that we've had um, regarding our facilities master plan. Over the course of the last three months, we've been gathering information from our administration. We've been doing focus groups. We've been working with our architects and engineers. And as a result, we have been able to come up with some concepts um, that we're going to be sharing with you this evening. Uh, there will be three sessions. The first session will begin right now at 5 o'clock, and we'll specifically take a look at instructional spaces and provide some visuals and some information about what we think might be part of the solutions, given the data that we have. About 45 minutes, or 5.45, we're going to take a look at our athletic fields and our indoor spaces. and. Finally, at approximately 6.30, we plan on talking a little bit about where we are at with our study of the 1911 building and reflecting on our 2015 building condition survey. Um, if you are watching us remotely, please feel free to uh, add a question into the chat section. We'll do our best to respond to those. If you're in the audience at any time during the presentation today, just please raise your hand and we'll do our best to uh, answer those questions. At this point, I want to turn it over to Kevin Rademacher, who's one of our architects on this project, who will um, add to the, my opening comments. Kevin. Thank you, Hank. Uh, all right, I'm going to run through the plans. Uh, we've had a number of meetings now, and we have some conceptual data uh, that you're going to see on the plan, so I'll quickly orient you. Um, the first few plans we're going to see is basically keeping the great structure as it is today in each of the buildings and what that would look like to accommodate some of the um, feedback we've received so far. Um, then we're going to show an evolution of that if grade levels start to move into different buildings and how that affects the, the end result. Um, so right now we're, we're looking at the elementary building. So you can see um, items in green with the hash are actually additions to the current building. Uh, areas in blue are reconstruction spaces and so are um, some of the purple areas. So we'll start from one side of the building to the other. Feel free to step in and ask questions. I'll try and respond to them. Um, one of the impacts we, we heard about was the cafeteria kitchen wasn't large enough to accommodate the student population um, that you'd like to have, uh, to have less lunch periods. So we'd be looking to add an addition, sort of push back the uh, kitchen space and then provide an addition for a larger dining. So those are the two additions, and you can see the whole area would be under reconstruction, and we don't have to push into any of the classroom spaces in doing that. Um, and then uh, the one of the other pieces of feedback that we had was there wasn't enough classroom space to accommodate the student population there. Um, so what you see here on the end of the center wing is a four classroom addition, and that could take various looks um, and possibly interconnect to the back if it, if it was necessary. Um, but it would provide a, you can see here that it would provide a uh, courtroom, a courtyard <laughs> condition, which is a little problematic for egress, not a huge problem, not dramatic, but we'd have to do some things to make that work properly. Um, we, in the front, in the main entry space, uh, we talked last time about how the current main entry kind of goes directly into the auditorium space, uh, which isn't a great security condition as it is today. So um, you can see, maybe you can't see, but there's a, a red arrow here. You sort of reorient your main um, entry direction through here and you create a secure vestibule um, with a secure access window to check credentials on the way into the building. And it would kind of isolate those spaces um, that are large assembly spaces like the auditorium. So still be accessible. And it would also provide a, <clears throat> a conference room right off the secure vestibule where uh, teachers could meet with a parent or parents um, without um, the need for them to enter into the main part of the school building. Yeah, so most of the thought process in newer secure vestibules is to not allow someone re to have real access to the main building unless it's super necessary they're in it. So they can still be held within the secure area, a teacher or whoever can come speak with the parent or visitor um, in a secure space. Uh, if you move on to the left here, uh, we've, we've seen two additions over here. Um, 
One of them is clearly an expansion of the gymnasium area. We've heard gyms in all buildings are undersized, um, and every one of them could use a, a bunk. And so we've, we've provided basically double the size along with the storage area um, off of the current gymnasium. So what exactly that looks like, whether it's an expansion directly or other independent buildings, um, we haven't really decided upon that, but that would resolve the issue there. Um, and then we have some space as a smaller addition here that's going to allow for uh, nurses space um, and renovations, allowing for counseling areas and things like that. So it will accommodate as, as like a larger suite in the space and better utilize the space that's there. And then, uh, so, so you talked previously about some of the upgrades that would be desired for the auditorium, like the stage curtains, uh, lighting, etc. However, the capacity issue, the capacity issue for the um, auditorium is pretty difficult to address in this configuration. So this um, represents a possible, it would be kind of ambitious, but it would be a, a possible enlargement and reconfiguration of that whole area. A little more disruptive perhaps because you'd have to take the auditorium out of service while that were while that was constructed, so it's just an idea. All like all of these are possibilities. Um, so you know that could be considered or or not. So that should relieve and provide the building with appropriate space based on what feedback we receive. Yeah, if the, if the grade levels, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, when you're talking about addition of the gym, yep. How close is that get to 31? It comes and closer. Where would the egress be? Because right now those doors are facing 31, mm -hmm. and that's obviously a concern. We can manipulate the egress. I mean, we'll we'll take a look at where it goes. We have to meet code at a minimum, but we wouldn't be trying to exit directly. Yeah, and it wouldn't necessarily. The question. Let me repeat the question. So the question from oh. the audience um, was that: Will the expansion of the gymnasium is that correct? Um, How close will it get to 31? Yeah. Will that create a, a problem with our one traffic here, and that's the response they were giving us. So it doesn't show it here. I did, it does, this drawing doesn't show the site elements, obviously, but I, I, I did check, and it, it comes, I'm more concerned about the proximity to the tennis courts than 31. I would say it's probably still at least, oh, I don't know, it's still a good distance away from 31, and we could exit out the sides or provide, you know, a fence or something along there. I don't, we would obviously want to send the kids running towards the highway. Would that still uh, provide a fire route um, access road around the building? Yeah, there's enough. I think there's enough room to still put a road there. That would, you know. Okay, and that extends out B wing. How does that? How close does that get us to the Bozeman? Yeah, extension. Yeah. Repeat the yeah. question. Yeah. So the question was about the extension on B wing. How close does that get to the Bozeman wing? And from just observation there, that's at least. 50, 40, 50 feet from the corner, if that's what your dimension you're looking for. So that walkway will have to be reconfigured? Yes, for sure. The walkway would need to be reconfigured, yeah. Yeah, any, any additions that are shown here, the, the site impacts would be accommodated okay. in, any, in any redesign. I have one more question. Yep. The cafeteria, that green part to add it on to the kitchen, is that the entire kitchen? And then the one where your pointer finger is, that's facing the kitchen. Correct. So the question was, uh, the addition onto the kitchen cafeteria is the green space back here just for the kitchen, and is this space purely for the kids? It's very conceptual, but generally that's the concept, is that you'd want the, the kitchen to be on an outside space accessible for deliveries, etc. And then we try and accommodate a large um, cafeteria space. And we would that increase the capacity of the cafeteria? If the kitchen is shifted. so. The kitchen would not remain in its place and expand the kitchen. It would be slid back to whatever is appropriately, you know, to accommodate, to allow for efficient serving. But some of this blue space would be given back to the kitchen or the cafeteria, and the addition would provide that additional space to accommodate all the students. Okay. It's almost like we'd have to build a new kitchen before we can take down the original one. If that makes sense. Well, so. what I'm wondering is if you look at the current cafeteria, we had took down the wall of a classroom. Mm -hmm. Could we get that classroom 
this one. Yeah. Uh, if we expanded the cafeteria. So that way. much of this takes up. So the question was, could we get this uh, classroom back? And is it possible? Maybe. Uh, we really have to take a look at the overall configuration of the space, um, along with code and the tables, and really understand the kind of capacity you need every lunch period. Sure. So it's it's possible we could look at that, but um, it gets you a classroom back, I guess, from possibly doing an addition. Sure. With you know, it's pretty efficient to do even classroom additions. So I don't know that that doing a kind of different addition here. You'd either be putting the square footage back here or up front. That's, that's, awesome. that's a great question. Yep. Thank you. Anything else on elementary? Anything on the PE? All right. So right now we're looking at middle school in its current state with the current um, grade levels. So you'll see at the bottom of each sheet the grade level that's intended for each design. Again, same colors mean the same thing. So we're looking at the green additions to accommodate more student population. So we're looking to, uh, we have a kind of an inefficient node here on the end of the classroom wing, which is impacting um, our ability to get appropriately sized classrooms out there. So in this configuration, we're looking to add um, sets of four additions on each side, sort of eliminate the end and maybe there's some other use for that if it's not efficient to actually demolish it. It is very close to a high grade change in the back, so if that also helps us um, deal with any kind of water issues that are on the site, that, that may come into play. So very conceptual, again, um, to, to deal with all of the changes in the overall building. Uh, we do have another A-wing um, addition um, for, more, for more space. You'll see up here another gym addition, which is roughly doubling the size of the gym. Um, we have impacts of going up here because tennis courts are there. So it would be more of an extension. Um, so when we see these rough, boxy images, just understand that we'll also be looking at actual circulation when things are designed. So if that space needs to be accessed independently of the other gym, we may you know, reorient where the corridors are. If we're already going to renovate the locker rooms, maybe the locker rooms slide down to make that all work. So. Um, but that's an order of magnitude addition that seems to accommodate the students staying there and having another teaching station in the gymnasium. Um, and then we have a possible addition for, for music here on the end. So that would be the instrumental and vocal mm -hmm. off the end, um, right in the back of house of where the cafetorium is. So, you know, it could feed, be a feeder to the cafetorium during performances as well. Um, and then we have a, you know, modification up here, renovation to possibly deal with the main office and try and provide that secondary or that um, isolated meeting space within the main offices. Secure side. Did I miss anything, Joe? Um, also, well, also in this B wing, um, if we convert this one portion of classrooms into offices and maybe student services, we could potentially make that corridor wider. Um, I know the narrow corridor has been a concern. There are not really um, enough lockers in that wing. Um, we could even, I showed this again later on a different drawing, but we could also like to look at making that ramp less steep that's there. Um, Thinking about so. it. Questions on that? Yeah. Um, the two additions up to the front, the those run into the parking area, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys have obviously taken into consideration that parking area being taken away, in a sense. Yeah. These additions extend right out to about the edge of the paved area that's okay. in front. So it, it would. Um, it would probably cut off that current connectivity that you have now. So we could either mean that people go back out into the street or there's some other solution where there's like a, narrow, a narrower um, access. Yeah, we are taking a look at the overall site plan okay. for this campus. So 
you'll, you'll see, I guess, in the next session. Okay. Um, anything that's chosen on here, well, then we'll start to accommodate all of those you know, circulation paths okay. and, and parking areas. Any other questions? All right. And now, again, same grade levels here at the high school. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a question from the, um, the chat session. Could you please explain again what the green expansion is on the end of C wing? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, we didn't talk about that. That that is, that's kind of a, a again, it's like a, a proposal uh, for. There's been mentioned a few a few times about storage and restrooms that people could use to fill up the um, field hockey field or the tennis courts. There's not really any way for you know kids to um, you know use facilities right now except for you know portable toilets and there's no storage out there. So that was just yeah, thought about. Possibly. Yeah, um, this is this, this um, area here. It was just a thought that it's close to the end of that building, which is near the parking lot and might be a convenient location. If we were to expand the gyms, we could also look at, you know, putting that kind of space in, in this area as well, in the existing footprint and not do an addition. Right. So all of this, obviously it's very conceptual. It's all gonna start to come into the fold with aidability through the state. You know, anything that's decided upon We'll have to go to the state, and the state will say, "Hey, we're willing to give you this much aid, and this is how much impact is going to be on the on the local side." So, we're always looking to maximize that for you. Um, so, if there's a a bad impact, you know, we'll try and adjust the design a little bit to get you better dollars. So, if that makes sense. All right, high school, nine twelve building. Um, so here we're looking at dealing with um, the main entry, possible enlargement there. Um, you know, that's, that's a, it's a concept right now. Um, it's kind of a historic storefront, so we'll have to, or frontage of buildings that we'll have to talk with Chippewa about on exactly how we might be able to accommodate that or do that at all. So if they come back and reject that idea, um, we may have to come up with a different solution. But right now, um, we wanted to enhance the security level right up here. Um, the front door. So uh, again, green addition. So the other addition that you see here is uh, expanding the cafeteria space um, on the current building in 1911. This is the thought process that 1911 will stay as is. And all of the blue that you see are kind of reconstructed spaces within the building footprint. Um, essentially leaving the classrooms as they are, but upgrading them, um, trying to accommodate anything ADA related, trying to tackle that at the, in that whole process. Um, the, uh, the reconfiguration spaces we're talking about really are in the library and really the gymnasium side. So in the library, we talked about possibly using a mezzanine because we do have a high base space here to possibly utilize and really uh, utilizing the outdoor exposure that you have on those walls behind you. Um, you can see the dashed line. So it's not totally designed yet, but that's the concept is to take out some of these walls and really push uh, pops of windows in that side. Um, as you come over to the gymnasium side, uh, we're looking to um, renovate really music and band, possibly swapping them with where technology currently is. And don't know if that completely works, so we're gonna have to look at kind of the facilities that are along the back row here. Um, that does work from the aspect of it being adjacent to the back side of the auditorium, so it's nice for uh, having that interplay with, with music um, during events. Um, so that's some of the concept when you see this connector. That's what it's talking about, is sort of swapping those, those spaces. Um, and then, of course, we have the pool re renovation that we wanna do, um, locker room, shower areas, power upgrades, um, and then really upgrading the appearance of the interior of that Area. There was a question last time, I believe, about spectator area in the pool. It's it's pretty difficult to enlarge that given the current footprint. Um, if we were to make a more, I guess, radical intervention in that area, then we could maybe pop out something and uh, add more seating. But it, it's um, it's uh, 
pretty tight as it is now. Yeah, so this is probably more apt for a more uh, involved reconstruction process. As you can see, auditorium is here, so this big rectangle is auditorium. If you leave that untouched, obviously you don't want to go that way. You don't want to go into your locker rooms, which are up here. And then your other adjacent walls are corridors. So what it would really involve is a potential addition in the future, you know, in some of these other schemes, maybe it makes sense to then push back into that space and then a new corridor comes flying by, you know, as we develop something else up here, if we require classrooms for one of these other concepts, maybe that can be accommodated in, in a scenario like that and try and maintain the majority of the pool in its current condition. Um, so a lot of, lot of um, locker room reconstruction. Uh, anything else that you see there? Fitness area, we talked about possibly um, taking this, what is the fitness room right here? That's off the front of the odd. Uh, and possibly in integrating that into the auxiliary gym and kind of making a fitness, you know, a portion of that auxiliary gym, a fitness center. Um, and that kind of opens up this area for a nice gathering space if you're having shows or even games where this can be a gathering space right outside of the auditorium. So whether there's concessions out there and, and things like that, that's what we can try and design in that space. Some uh, history of, of Roy Hart, you know, start to bring in those pieces that are kind of scattered around the building, maybe focus them more in that area. Any questions on high school? This is, this is keeping the grade levels the way they are and not doing anything with 1911 besides trying to reconstruct it in place. Mm -hmm. Going back, so when you mentioned the library, in the elementary and the middle school, at another meeting you talked about reconfiguring library media centers I did not mention it just now, but yes, that, yeah, that's yeah. the intent in all of these to have a sort of maker space built into all the libraries. Yep. And we'd look to have, in here we're not really showing it, but we'd look to have those scaled down meeting areas yeah. for students for peer learning or however you wanted to conduct it, maybe a you know, five person, 10 person, whatever makes sense, plus a classroom size space so you can bring up your entire class into the media center space. Um, and this is a, kind of an evolution of what you just looked at. Um, so still 9 through 12. Um, this concept does the uh, same thing on that last plan in 1911. It sort of renovates the, the spaces in kind. Um, this is a different concept with the gym and locker rooms. And it kind of blows out the band rooms in this space. Um, so it, it allows for locker rooms, but a more usable gym space where they're really next to each other versus, you know, in a strange orientation. So you can have a larger capacity uh, competition in there. Um, you can open up a wall, you could have a, you know, a, a walk, draw curtain, they call it. So that's you literally do what it sounds like, you walk across, or you can have hard barriers, you can have a drop, etc. through there. So you can have multiple classes going on and then but break it down for a larger competition. Yes. And there's a question from the um, audience. It looks like the existing music area is larger than the technology area. You said you might swap those locations to the south of the area to the parking lot. Could that room be extended into the parking lot if additional space is needed? This, so this plan actually does address that. So if the music space is, sorry, everyone had that question, I said, <laughs> the, the music space would be expanded if it was to move back behind the auditorium and this is a representation of that. Everything else we talked about is, is really the same in this scenario. Um, we are showing a track, a, a walking track accommodated up there um, at that gym. Um, that's a conversation that will evolve also because it does impact how many bleachers you have on the wall or how do the bleachers address the track? Are they in front, are they under? Um, it's a headroom thing, it's an exiting thing at stairwells and things like that. So um, as we evolve these plans, um, you'll kind of see how that can actually help is, you know, if we end up having a two-story addition, if we start moving grade levels around, that maybe that gets accommodated access to that track. It makes sense to have stairwells more 
than just for a trap. So now, uh, what we've started to do, part of the conversation last time, was to start talking about moving around grade levels. Um, and what that really allows you to do, and you'll see how it kind of snowball effect, is it moves a fourth grade over to the middle school, as it is now, and that really frees up a significant amount of classrooms in the elementary building and allows you to make those accommodations for the expanded cafeteria, yes, taking over more classrooms, but getting that seating space without requiring an addition to occur, which is positive in terms of a, very positive in terms of the capital project because of the aid situation when you start doing additions. Um, we're still looking to uh, adjust what occurs at the main entry vestibule, the secure um, node that we've been talking about, and still expanding the gymnasium. So those would be the primary um, additions or the only additions, but the, you see everything in blue would be a sort of a reconstructed space to accommodate that new grade level situation. Yes. Uh, prior to the meeting, I had a, a question asked about at the elementary school, indoor space for exercise because of the long winters. Has that been accommodated here and where does that show up in the sketches? I guess I would say it would it'd be in the gymnasium space. Okay. Um, now that you could have it partitioned. Um, again, this is showing a hard wall, meaning of course it's physically there now. Whether the work that occurs causes this to become one physical space and to be divided, that's something we need to work out. Um, so if it could be partitioned off or utilized and scheduled in a manner to accommodate that, that's what we'd be looking at. We don't have another addition um, to account for that. I don't think that we have, we have every classroom utilized right now. So unless there were some spares, do we have spare rooms? Well, there, there, there might be. Right now we show five rooms per grade level, if that seems like an appropriate number for what you currently. Yeah, so depending on sections of grade level and kind of the enrollment as it flows through, um, that could fluctuate rooms. And we could look at possibly taking over a room or two to accommodate an, another function if it, if it was required. Um, however, all of this, when it's not a classroom space, it's not gonna account for aid on the state side, so you need it to be teaching spaces. But that also can interplays with your enrollment. So um, we'd have to discuss how that, how that would work out if the gymnasium addition does not accommodate that for you. Oh, and just one of the other things, what this also does is combine some of the classrooms that have been previously subdivided in uh, this wing and sort of groups, maybe more the academic intervention services in, in, in one centralized area. So if these, like, these are blue because we would be taking out the subdivisions and making that a whole room again, as an example. Yeah, so trying to group the classrooms together and then the classrooms that would be displaced for the office functions would just be a better layout of space. The offices would be sized appropriately, or whether it's open and you know has, has cubicles or has closed offices, that's all an evolution of what would happen there instead of just kind of you're in a classroom trying to operate. So the auditorium on this example doesn't have doesn't not need to accommodate you know, it, like it has the same level moves. It has the same well, one grade level moves, but it, it, it would be the same discussion point, I guess. Yeah. If an addition one, or if you would need to reconstruct it, it would be the same condition here. Yeah, if there are ideas from one plan that makes sense to mix and match, I mean, we're not saying you can't do anything that we've showed before. It's just that that seemed to make sense that you might consider not having to do that. Because they're, yeah. if you're taking out some. Right. Yeah, as a case for Now, the capacity and the exactly. work just needs to be, and you can have the air conditioning yeah, and all that. right, so if we can start to address rigging and lighting and anything yep. else in there, it's, it's yeah. kind of straightforward. All right, so you're gonna see some similar additions here too. Um, so an expansion of the gymnasium area, um, exactly what that looks like again is, is up for discussion. 
Um, we're trying to avoid impacts on the existing cir site circulation as well, but this kind of more clearly defines, you know, orchestra band or vocal band, really, in chorus um, off the backside of the Capitorium. So you see the blue are, are renovated spaces again, but that's bringing um, fourth grade over. So it'd be now a four, six building, so that's pushing students over here to this building. Yeah, there's one, now there's one fewer grade level at this building as well. But um, yeah, so, so, the, so there's a reduced population and then just playing around with things like, you know, if, if the stage is currently here, you know, if we shifted it over here, would you be able to do with an, with an addition? Would you get a more usable cafeteria, cafetorium space? Um, some of the other comments still apply, but you know, there are some you know, efficiencies if you're only housing three grade levels in, in this building. You know, instead of an addition or, or changing this space to storage, we could convert a classroom to restrooms and storage for the fields. Uh, here, you wouldn't probably wouldn't need to put additions on as much as just reconfigure some of the spaces to get you better, slightly larger classrooms. Um, so a lot of that thought process, we yeah. want to do reconstruction inside the building footprint that's good for it. So getting those restrooms built inside the existing footprint is, is the state's kicking in a, a significant amount of money versus all local shares would go outside of the footprint for spaces like that. And then the idea here, I don't know, Kevin, you might have more experience with this. If we were to, you know, get rid of this uh, end space, could, you know, can we trade that against yeah, addition? So, so that's a discussion elsewhere. point with SED on the logic of is it an, an addition if physically we're, we're replacing it? So it's not a guarantee. We can't, I can't tell you today that that's going to work, but it's a part of the process that we would submit prior to any kind of vote occurring. Um, we don't know. What kind of impact that has? Um, so it's it's kind of nice that you're moving, you know, seven eight um, over. That allows for sort of less intense auditorium type situations um, than you would normally have. And this building was an elementary building prior, um, so it kind of fits the bill. Um, makes a lot of a lot of sense to move grade levels around to me as an outside person. Um, looking at this. So what that really does is that pushes you over into the high school and now we have 712 building. Um, also the nice benefit is that you start to group all of the uh, impacts of bringing those students over. That actually brings money or aid, we'll say, over from the middle school over to here, uh, which helps with your overall maximum cost allowance for this building. So that provides for more teaching stations that allows you to group that money to address things like a larger gymnasium or let's say an auditorium pool or any of those pieces and parts there's sort of more funds to work with on a five-year rolling clock basis um, so we see that as a positive um, right now you see the gymnasium and as we saw in the previous plan that was an evolution this is also that same evolution upper track new locker room reconstruction music suite back here with the addition um, we also have an expansion further expansion of the cafeteria to accommodate that new student load if 1911 stays the way it is. Um, the real big difference here is that you have a classroom wing addition to accommodate those, that student population coming over from the middle school. Um, so everything else is, is pretty much the same, right? Yeah, yeah, and we, we would need to study more carefully, you know, exactly what you know, with the, court, with the course offerings and the different sections, different classes and scheduling, you know, how many rooms would be needed, if, if any. Um, so that's just a thought at this point. Yeah, it seems to be the really only place you'd want to do an addition of that scale. Um, and that gets you deeper into thought about what would happen if 1911 changes, right? So uh, combining those rooms or, or what do you keep in isolation? So those are also thoughts. Like, do you keep the middle school sort of in an isolated zone from the high school? Um, so, further discussion. Anything else on here? Any questions coming in? Does that generally make sense? Any questions about the grade moves? So, so the way we view it, um, from a from an aid and construction standpoint. If you are to do those grade shifts, it would be more beneficial for overall aid.
because you, you really, you'll still have uh, kind of a static addition want at elementary and at the current middle school of the gymnasiums and uh, you know the main entry vestibule. That's that's the same across the board. But when you don't have to do those classrooms, classroom additions, it saves a significant amount of money on those two buildings. Um, and then you can kind of focus a lot of the funding for additions into this building that has a much larger larger maximum cost allowance to do that too. Um, so it kind of then right sizes your district for your current student population as well. And you have a more comfortable environment, I guess I could say, in, in your elementary and, and uh, four or six building. So in summary, every one of these spaces, we're going to be looking at the infrastructure. We're going to be looking at the heating, the ventilating, the air conditioning, the windows, the flooring, all those. What you presented today is conceptually that space expansions were where things would be renovated. And the question I would have to the audience and people that have been here for multiple sessions, didn't we catch any, everything? Have we missed anything that was a big item that we've talked about over the last month and a half um, that we should make sure the architects go back and include in the drawings? Is there any questions, anything that we may have missed from the audience or for people that are present? Still haven't addressed the safety issues of the space you live so the question from the audience, I believe, is have we addressed the same four, issues of 1911? Four years ago, you were here and told us that the building's not safe. So in terms of a, of a reconstruction, when I say reconstruction, that's not a rebuild from the ground up. That's a term ICD uses. Um, that's talking about a build out within the physical space that's there. So there are complicating factors in renovating that building inside. Um, you have some wood structure in there, which would cause you to upgrade the type of um, fireproofing and, and walls and ceiling plate and, and things like that to, to bring that up to code. Because whenever we renovate a space, we, as a level two reconstruction, we move a door, move a wall, whatever, that's gotta go to a level two reconstruction. We have to meet current code. So it's gonna raise the bar on everything in there. We're gonna have to look at all the ADA potential issues in there. If the ramping is an appropriate ramp, we're gonna have to deal with that. Um, if the doors aren't rated, we're gonna have to deal with that. If the walls and floors aren't rated, I already know the last estimate was 26 million just to get it to code. Yeah. So, so all, now we're talking just rearranging things that we already have and not addressing a safety issue with a. No, I, I think that the purpose of this first session was to look at what would need to be, um, right. you know, fixed space wise at, at the various buildings. I, we can talk more about the 1911 in the, the third session this evening. We, we've started to, you know, compile those thoughts on, on that. So these all assume that we're leaving it in place and that there would be a separate set of, a whole separate effort done for that building if it were to stay in place. Yes. So, so we have, you're, if you're adding a gymnasium to the middle school, it's the same cost as adding a gymnasium between the two schools to convert your gymnasium to the classroom. And, and we're not saying any of that's off the table. We're, we're, we're just showing the evolution of the, the thoughts here. Now we're going to add a new cafeteria next to a cafeteria that today I could probably float a canoe in. Correct. And those are, those are yeah, we, we were going to take a strict look at if buildings stayed the same and doing the least amount of renovation possible, that's what this is. Um, we, do, <laughs> we don't have any canoes in the plant, but we do have an assessment of the 1911 building, which we're going to talk about in the third session tonight. And then that changes the ball game about how and where we put things if that's on the table. Okay, what I'd like to suggest, we'll take a five minute break. We're gonna reconvene at 545. We're gonna talk about athletic fields and our indoor gymnasium spaces uh, as it relates to athletics, okay? So five minute recess, we'll reconvene at 545.
Good evening once again. My name is Dr. Hank Stapinska, Superintendent of Schools in the Royalton Heartland Central School District. Uh, this evening we are hosting our third of three public sessions uh, for comment and feedback on our facilities master plan. Uh, this evening we've just completed a session and taking a look at conceptual drawings of um, what our schools might look like with a limited amount of renovation and expansion based on the current configuration. Uh, we've looked at classroom spaces and the ancillary spaces and we uh, took some comments and feedback uh, over the last 45 minutes. Our next 45 minute session is gonna be devoted to taking a peek at what our outdoor athletic fields and our indoor athletic fields might look like based on the comments and feedback that we've been receiving over the course of the last two months. At this time, I'd introduce Kevin Rademacher, who is our um, lead architect and our engineer, Megan Fredell, uh, who will be uh, sharing with you some of the concept and ideas that have come from our focus groups today. Thank you. I'm gonna let Megan start off uh, with the site. Okay, we're just gonna start at the elementary school. Um, this, this is the site blankly, but from the feedback, um, it's looking at uh, keeping the existing baseball field here and um, also a green space in the outfield. So those are kind of shaded lighter and the concerns that came up were parking, um, some younger age level type fields and a potential restroom and concession building. So pretty much your parking is at max capacity as it is. Um, the only real area to gain anything um, due to the property line and keeping the existing field um, is coming down here to the outfield of the baseball, which isn't ideal, to be honest with you. Nobody wants to hit a ball into the back of their car. Um, but thinking about if that space is maybe used during um, a soccer season or a tournament that's played out here in these um, you know, U10, U12 size fields. I'm sure many of you have driven down the throughway and uh, driven by the Batavia turf fields there. Um, that's a great example of a bunch of different size fields um, from, they have even, I think, U8s um, up to U12s and even full size fields there. Um, you can see that on an aerial that's somewhat, this mimics, these are uh, two U10s and a U12 um, soccer field. Um, and then also the addition of an on-site berm, which sort of makes the cluster a little bit smaller to make sure that we can accommodate that and potentially maybe a net or fence of some kind um, to keep all the balls and children, whoever's here in that area. Um, so the biggest thing with orienting where the building was is access to utilities. Uh, utilities are very shallow here. Um, there's sanitary manhole here. So the further I put this out, um, uh, out to the west here, the harder it is, it's going to be, you'll need a pump and things like that. So that is why I positioned that building where it is um, to hopefully get gravity system to the sanitary um, and water will also be a difficult thing um, to get here. So the further I can get towards streets and utilities, um, the less likely it is that there have to be other alternatives to get utilities to this facility. Um, it is right behind the backstop. The backstop is here. Um, we could also modify that to also accommodate the press box if that was a thing that we needed. Yep. Set up kind of perfect position to allow for that to occur. Yeah, it could be different shapes. Uh, you know, if you're at the concession, um, being able to see the game from, you know, serving. Um, but also we need to make sure we maintain an access road for vehicles, um, emergency vehicles to the rear of the building. Um, it does lose you a few parking spaces along here, which I was able to pick up that, those spaces plus five more um, in this layout. And we've also been able to protect cars um, with larger netting poles along foul lines that are very close to parking areas. So that could be done as well. Yep, so um, that really looked at the issues for the field wise. Um, this shows the new um, additions that were just on the tennis courts and the playground. Um, and then potentially the gym Kind of talked about the gym addition being in this orientation so you can see the distance off the street it's about we'll say in plane with the end of the tennis courts um, so in terms of the fire access road they don't really need to go fully around the building it just needs to be uh, within a 300 foot radius i believe yep 
Yeah, and Toby this was, uh, it's warm, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's this, I, when we originally did this, this, it does allow for a fire truck turnaround. So um, this in itself, as it's constructed, does meet all fire codes. So if it does become a dead end, the basketball core actually is the turnaround. Um, it just got double use out of it, which was great. So um, fire code can be maintained while also looking at the gym addition if it's in this configuration. Something like that, and that orientation, if it's fully reconstructed or if it's just an addition. Um, and then at the main entry, that's the process when we, the type of addition we're looking at doing in front of the odd at the main entry and providing that new access point. And we kind of discussed just offline that um, this may get adjusted depending on how much offset you want off of the drop off area. Yes? Um, this is more a question for John. With all those fields added, What's the traffic coming into and out of the elementary school on a daily basis, weekends, just we, like how would it impact us? Like what would be the schedule those, of the bench track? Those are also youth fields. So we, the goal would try to be is to keep everything here at the high school. This would be more of we're looking at like Saturday, you know, and after school hours. Community, more community? Correct, yeah. Okay, okay. Would there have to, like, remember how I said? So again, the question was, what would be the increased traffic and usage of the facilities? And our athletic director, Grimala, commented that this was assuming that we're moving the varsity athletics up to the high school. This would be more youth development, probably evenings and weekend use utilization. And you can reconfigure this outfield as well with some U10, and you can help as much as you need um, to you know, show that layout and what those are. I don't, I don't even know if two U10s in one U12, but that seemed to fit the best. Um, while also maintaining space, it's 30 feet between the fields. I believe in Batavia they have 40, but luckily they have a lot more room. So um, 30 is usually a pretty good uh, distance between the fields uh, for safety um, at that age. More questions, athletics at elementary. This is just the existing site. So we've been talking about um, bringing all varsity um, athletics to this current site. This is not any different from the discussion a few weeks ago um, that we had of um, bringing a large uh, multi-use field that would accommodate both um, baseball and softball on a single plane, ideally, so that we could also use um, the outfield space um, for sort of rectangle sport um, and then having your track oriented north south with your bleachers on the west while also maintaining your current grass field um, the site's kind of shown and that's all going to depend on how the buildings go um, so where you know parking goes if an addition goes that all has to be figured out as iterations go but um, ideally there would be some sort of central corridor to wherever the building ends up that we can realign um, as we go through, but it's nice to kind of have a nice central gathering hub um, and a safe route to both the school uh, parking and um, potentially bus drop off areas for your visitors um, coming here as well. And a nice walking path. I like to mark those out. It's nice to have something to go at lunch to walk around the entire field. Yeah, so this is showing sort of an accommodating connecting building, which we're sort of walk, working away from at this point, um, where that classroom addition that we saw earlier tonight was really somewhere in this range. Uh, mm -hmm. So that would start to accommodate the student load coming over from middle school over at the high school, and, and that kind of, you know, maybe creates a plane of access from this new site development back into the, the current building. Um, but what that really does is that, that kind of opens up this whole area for how do we reorient and lay out that um, parking lot? How do you know? Do we provide nice circulation paths that are protected by curbing to get across there if there's going to be pedestrian cross traffic here? You know, or do we isolate the front and the back? A lot, a lot of things to discuss when we get that down the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. What is this purple? Sorry, here? Yeah. Uh, ag space, showing some green space to 
remind us at some point we need to have ag space, green space for the program. Um, you know, and that'll also be an iteration of where roads and buildings go, but I don't want anyone to forget we know there's ag space and green space needed at ASF. And purple's on his car. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do Don't look at it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and we're we work together, which is nice. So you know, making sure you know it, that we are staying on top of each other. I know this is not already you know filled out, so showing it kind of we know it's going to happen, and we know it has to relate to what we decide to do outside. Um, and as we go through that, we will make sure that all of those things talk to each other, and there are safe routes. Yeah, the, these are more areas that are set in stone in that. This is really the only orientation that it works in to provide for the baseball to come over. Um, obviously, if that evolves somehow, it can be different. Uh, but it also gives you an ideal setup for your, your track or your track and your field with some orientation and where the grandstands would be located. Um, this is really the ideal situation for the site for athletics. What occurs with the buildings? That's a sort of a different discussion, but it, you know we'll make it tie together properly. And the reason the ag's in there again is all, all part of the master planning process and make sure we don't that doesn't fall off the table we have no room for it. Yep, and I just wanted to also point out I've done this at other places. The new track does fall outside the existing um, track lines. So this could be constructed while you could still use this field um, in some iteration. Um, I've had plenty of success with that. Um, so I know you just redid this. So you'll get a good number of years on resurfacing of the track that you already have as it can potentially stay online as you construct a new facility. In feasible. Oh, sorry, yes. So in summary, mm -hmm. it is feasible given the current footprint to bring all of the varsity athletics up to this campus. It may not be ideal and it tight, might be a tight space, but you've been able to work out a plan that we could bring either turf or synthetic and have all of our varsity sports. One of the challenges might be in scheduling, trying to get the practice field such in place but right now in these early phases it's possible correct yes we can yes working with scheduling luckily we have somebody much better at that than I am so um, I'm sure we can work together on how to make sure there's enough space for all of that yes Well, that that is the, the appropriate orientation in terms of how the ideal situation for Sun Angle for yeah, a field. But, but this isn't, we're not amateur. Oops, sorry, what? We've got a brand new track. We just made a brand new track this year. Yeah, we, so that was done. Right sure it's brand new. Yep, yeah, so that was done because of the timeline to potentially get right. this online was too, too great. So you have a track that didn't have any usability at all was the right. logic around but doing it, just that. Make it count like it. I'm not trying to convince. Uh, I'm just. We're just trying to show what can work, and you know, whatever we're directed to design, we'll design. Years of use out of that. So all of this is a master plan right now, and none of it's set in stone. But if this was to be undertaken, the way that state aid works is that roughly 20 percent of a, a maximum cost allowance. What's available to each building is allowable for incidentals. And within incidentals is site work. So it has nothing to do with the construction within the building. So you have to do them in smaller chunks. So it's a progression of projects really to get here. So it wouldn't be necessarily one boat you could, but it would be not great on the, on the tax burden side on one boat. So the idea, especially around site work, is to do a lot of site work in each project to get to an ultimate goal and then the, the, the construction of the building since you have the 80 percent of that fund is available for construction within the building that's a little bit easier to adapt but you want to you want to know your end game and it's and it's it's probably multiple projects out and probably five years say from a vote to do one portion of this and then another five years to do the other portion and or how many other portions it takes to get to where you want to be 
And I think it's important to remind everyone in the audience who are here and, and um, watching us virtually here, these are concepts and these are responses back to what the asks have been. Um, we're thinking outside the box, we're thinking long term. Ultimately, we're gonna come up with these concepts. We're gonna be able to start to tie some dollar figures to them and look at these options. And ultimately, the, the board and the taxpayers will have to make some determinations on where we go. There's only so much money that we'll be able to spend and we'll need to prioritize how we do that. Uh, we have to address safety, that's our number one concern. We have to make sure that our existing buildings are maintained for the long haul, the boilers, the roofs, the parking lots. Then we have to take a look in consideration, can we go along with what our gymnasium spaces are, our athletic field? These are desired states that have been brought to us by the community. It's not a fait complete. this is not done. There's a lot of work that needs to take place as we move forward, but again, this is what came out of our athletic studies and our, our coaches and our athletic director asking us to see, could we do this on one site? We may ultimately decide that that's not realistic and we have to stay with what we've got for a longer period of time, or maybe this is the 15 year project. Maybe there's a whole bunch of other things that need to take place before that happens. So again, concepts being shared, lots and lots of discussion and move forward. Yeah, we've got to look at this as a long-term concept, this is a short-term concept. So the next athletic director comes along and says, hey, you know, we need, it doesn't look like a long-term need, it's a short-term band-aid to satisfy the Maybe that's a try. It's going to cost a couple million dollars to move that proposal. It'll cost the taxpayer, what, three, four hundred thousand, maybe? Well, that's, it's a matter of, I forget what you paid originally for that. Oh, it's 86. 86. So you have an 86% coupon ballpark. I know there's a lot of math involved there, but 86% of whatever you do, if we're staying within the maximum cost allowance of attainable, which is always the goal, 86% um, of that would come from the state, whatever it costs. Um, that's the plan. I've been doing this for always far above taxpayers. You, there is a possibility if there's our projects Every done. Project that way. If there has been my experience. Okay. okay. I don't I don't I thought Roger just spent six hundred almost six hundred thousand dollars on a roof. Well that building is unable. Okay, yes. Okay. Unable work is definitely an impact on the direct costs, which we try to avoid. And that this is an aidable portion of work. So Yep. Thank you, Jeff, for your comments. We'll make sure we got that on the record here and then bring that together. Um, could you guys proceed with the uh, indoor spaces? Yeah, sure. Great. So back to the elementary building. Um, we're really concentrating on the existing gym area, which is here in purple, and the proposed addition, which de really doubles the size of the gymnasium. Also another um, addition additional piece which accommodates some some more storage so go ahead. yeah I mean really all that does is gives you the opportunity to you know have twice the space some of this blue area we'd probably want to turn into a corridor to, so you could have separate access to the gyms so you know some of what is currently storage is shifted over to here we could make that bigger or smaller as as needed you know I wouldn't want to go really beyond these windows here but but there is some flexibility in the size of this as well so this you know it's a it's a conceptual diagram about you know access and function and adjacency is, is really what we're trying to do here so that again is an impact possibly not not able um, because of the analysis that needs to be done by SED so additions are troublesome at times for that, so that's where it starts to fall into the unable side. So, so yep. this is a result of the conversations we had last meeting. There was a request to expand the space not only for the classroom and the indoor play and gymnasium um, that kind of addresses that issue, but there was also a need for uh, the youth sports and the basketball and so forth. There's no space for bleachers for people to sit. So this expansion would not only meet the needs of the day program, perhaps some of that indoor recess time but also some of the athletic stuff that we're doing for our developmental programs. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, one thing that's nice about security additions is, is um, SED has been generous about allowing for data on those because of the security yeah, the reasoning around it. So um, this would likely be an enable addition. Any other questions? 
questions on the gymnasium what that would be obviously it's an evolution and if that was chosen you can get much deeper into how that actually is going to look if there's going to be features that would be possible over to the current middle school um, this is showing the four sixth grade level so you know things wants will change a little bit depending on what grade levels are actually going to be there but the floor plans that you've seen tonight are all the same um, showing a square footage of addition that would accommodate essentially doubling the size of the gymnasium um, and then accommodating and modifying the locker rooms in that area. Yeah, and this one you could even, because it would be adding to the end of the gym rather than the side of the gym, you could even think of it as doing like an increment of a half gym or a full additional space depending on what were, you know, what was, um, you know, the, the perceived need. And those expansions would allow for a full-size court with three-point lines and bleachers and those things. Is that what your you know, your schedule is leading us towards? We'd have to look at if it was if it was going to be a competitive gymnasium. At the high school does. I'm not sure that these smaller schools allows it like a full competitive gym. Yeah, yeah we. And these are probably not high enough either. And your high school gym isn't even tall enough for that actually. So. So we we could certainly look at that yes. more closely if that were. So that kind of plays cool. into the. The furthering the logic of why it's good to move the students to the middle school over here um, because then you have you have one gym to focus on to make that accommodate the runoff spaces and the, and the ceiling clearance um, required for a competition gym um, so this would be viewed I guess more as an elementary in this situation for gym, gym classes not that it's limited there if you say you want a competition gym in every building, that's also something that can be done, but it's, again, if, if it's additions and things like that, it's, it's uh, more impactful on taxes. Uh, this one is the reconstruction. You can kind of see underlaid maybe the auxiliary gym and a current main gym over here. And what that does is that we're, we're really kind of building over that space. Again, want to build inside the existing footprint and build a competition gym that can be divided. Um, and we're showing it accommodating a track in there, um, and that would have all the runout spaces and clearances required for a competition gym for all sports, all sports that go in a gym. And then we, we show the locker, um, new locker rooms really inside the building footprint, but they'd be brand new and configured however you see appropriate. And then you see some stairwells going up that accesses that track level because you're going to need to have that exit um, and ADA accessibility. Questions on the high school gymnasium. That's not even believe it. It is um, because it's within the existing building footprint. What that allows you to really do is um, so building by building. Max and cost allowance is built by building. So every single space in here, whether it's a classroom or gymnasium or anything that generates a, a secondary level, allows you for more than just classrooms, but Whatever aid is generated here, you can flow that all to one spot inside of the existing building footprint. So that's nice. So if that's not an addition, that's very good for you. If it's an addition, it's more complex. Say you build the gymnasium here, this big of a footprint over here. And it's one, say it's one gym station because you have another gym station in the pool. Let's say they give you one. That's roughly equivalent of $500,000 in aid, which is not much for a gym. But if you build it in here, you might be able to completely accommodate with the funds available in the overall building. That's why classroom additions are better, because each one of these classrooms, as long as SE authorizes that you need those classrooms, they're $500,000 each. So you start to group together a mass of $8 to, to make this happen, versus a gym out, you know, out like here. So whether this goes here or here or wherever, if it's on the existing footprint, good, good for eight. questions at any of the athletic spaces as the needs been addressed, met, and discussed over the course of the last half hour and earlier today? Got any questions from hey, me? Kind of, yes, um, please. On that, that pool area, for that addition, where you guys added that addition, those classrooms that are running along the pool there, you guys don't show like um, any kind of expansion onto that pool area. Would that be in consideration? 
all of it's in consideration. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not shown on this plan, but um, if if the direction is decided upon to bring middle right. school students over, you know what we do here may com change completely and, and allow for a seating area. Okay. Pool. The piece of paper was two inches too small. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we can show some tape. Some tape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So all of that is okay. you know. It's more stuff we're capturing now from tonight to try and build that into the overall. Okay. If there's no more questions on the athletic fields. Good question. There's a couple there. Yes, uh, so um, Mrs. Schlosser at the uh, middle school, she wants to know, are there drawings that would replace the 1911 building with a gym? Uh, there are, are not drawings, but that is certainly uh, doable, again, because you're within the building footprint. So if that may make sense to move this space over here and keep classrooms more on this side, and that's going to be an evolution of this design. So that's what we're going to meet about next, is about the 1911 building, the goods, the bads, the uglies, and what can we do differently. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all in play. Those larger assembly spaces, or any large space, that's hard to build in addition to, you have, you want to find that big footprint. And that's a more complex multi-step process where you have to build some space before you can, you know, knock that down and replace it with a gymnasium and such. So. Yeah, phasing does come into play in all of this. We're always thinking about that, just like, say, if the track or the field were to be done, that you can keep using the one you have until the next one's built. Um, it's, there's going to be a lot of swing space, so grade levels ideally wouldn't change until the spaces are, are constructed or at least enough to accommodate the class moves so that's a little ways down the road yeah, a few more questions that really need to refresh here um, we had a question is the football stadium for football only no. the football stadium can accommodate any outside sport that's made for a field group so soccer lacrosse football they don't be the appropriate hockey. size yeah. field hockey so Next question was, would the rectangular space drawn out in the baseball and softball fields be big enough for field hockey? Yeah. And the answer to that would be yes. Okay. Um, it's hard to tell by the diagram, but how many locker rooms are there? Uh, the, they're not fully laid out, but we would have conversations about what you would need for PE versus team rooms versus multiple team rooms. Um, you know, locker count, locker size, uh, showers. So those really won't evolve until we have we further the conversations about what needs to be in there. And that's going to impact their ultimate size. That's all I've got for questions right now. Um, what I'll do is I'll ask that we'll take a brief five minute recess, and at six twenty, we'll begin our final conversations today to begin a discussion of how are we progressing and exploring the cost benefits of the nineteen eleven building and some other building condition issues that we've been uh, exploring, okay? So we'll reconvene at 6.20.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our third public session in giving feedback and contributions from our community uh, regarding our facilities master plan. Um, today, uh, we have been speaking about our instructional spaces. And during our first 45 minutes, our second 45 minutes, we were talking about athletic fields and buildings. And our last session tonight is to um, foreshadow some of the work that we're doing right now specific to the 1911 building. We're doing a study on its um, the cost and benefits of maintaining it as is versus tearing it down. And we've also started our process of looking at the 2015 building condition survey. And that building condition survey is a survey that we have to do approximately every five years. It takes a look at everything related to the facilities, from every outlet to the roof to the windows, the boilers, parking lots, the whole nine yards. And it's intended for us to have a really good handle on what needs to be maintained to provide a safe, quality academic experience for our students. So this evening, it's, um, we're expecting our studies to be completed in the month of March, but we thought we'd give the committee a little insight of where we are and how that process is going. So once again, I'll turn it back over to our architects at Labella, uh, Joe and Kevin. Thanks. Um, yeah, so just to, to uh, expand on what uh, um, as Dr. Sapinski was, was explaining, uh, the last building condition survey was performed in 2015, and they historically had been done every five years, but um, they, SED recently changed to a staggered uh, schedule where districts across the state, instead of all doing them on the same five-year uh, interval, are staggered now so that some districts do it, um, well, they'll still all do it five years, um, repeating, but like they won't all be in the same year. So one fifth of the districts in New York will do it this year, for instance, one fifth next year, etc., to sort of spread out the effort, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, the next scheduled building condition survey for Roth and Heartland isn't until 2024. Um, so, but we, you know, wanted, you know, some more answers now. So our, our first step was to kind of go back to the 2015, uh, uh, building condition survey and look at um, what was identified at that time and uh, what work has been done related to that, uh, well, I'll call it a BCS for short, uh, on that BCS, the work identified in that BCS, what work has been done since that time and what work is still remaining. Uh, additionally, there have been, uh, you know, as we've been uh, working on uh, these projects over the years, there have been more items that have come up from the facilities department or the various uh, building administrators, uh, just more things that have been identified that um, you know are BCS type items. So we looked at 2015, sort of went through every every item that was on there and you know determined if it had been fully completed, partially completed, or was still to be addressed. So we're still in the process of um, tabulating all the um, cost impact of that work, but we have gone through and identified you know, what those items are and um, added in, as I said, you know, the other things that we've discovered along the way since then. Um, there, um, so we're doing that for all three schools and we're taking sort of a even closer look at this um, portion of the high school, which is colloquial, you know, sort of commonly known as the 1911 building. Um, it was actually built in different time periods. So this front area was built in 1911, but there were other additions in 1938, 1948, some additions which there was no record of when it was built, so we're, we're guessing. Um, but it is really, um, it's been an original piece that's been added on to over time. Um, there are um, a number of things about the BCS. So the BCS looks at things that are breaking and can be fixed. Um, what the BCS doesn't really look at is like how the building operates and you know is it meeting the needs of the you know instructional uh, you know the teachers or the in uh, purposes of instruction. Is it um, really satisfactory from a contemporary standpoint in terms of how it operates, um, ADA access, uh, you know, wheelchair access, things like that. And is it really, um, are the spaces laid out the way you would want them to be? So there's a number of things that I 
call kind of tangible things like, okay, the roof is leaking, we need to fix the roof. Uh, the windows are not operating properly, we should replace the windows. There are lintels that appear to be heavily corroded and are causing uh, you know, cracking in the masonry, so that needs to be fixed. But then there are certain things that really are not readily, I guess, fixable, if, if you want to call it that. Things like the, um, some of the proportions of some of the classrooms um, lead to an awkward layout with you know, not so great sight lines uh, to, to the, the teacher station. Um, there is persistent flooding. Uh, I think several times a year, the, the cafeteria floods. There's an internal courtyard that floods. Some of the, the you know the, the guidance and, and other areas that are lower, um, you know, get flooded out. And it's not like a one-time thing. It seems to be a recurring problem. Um, that's kind of tough to address with this being you know half sunken. Like, it, like some of these spaces are below the outside, uh, you know, driveways and, and, and parking lots. So it, it's kind of a real challenge to stop them from flooding when they're at a low point. Um, there are, um, the, this 1911 building is a, um, the floor structures and, and, and the roof structure has a lot of wood framing in it. Um, and if we were to attempt to modify some of the corridor walls or reconfigure the classrooms, a lot of the walls in this portion are load bearing. And to try to adjust a wall like that in a 111 year old building like this, it, it's just not really feasible. Um, there are other things like some of the exits, normally you'd want, if, if you're on the third floor and there's a fire alarm, you wanna be able to go into a stairwell, go down to the bottom, exit out the building. Some of the stairs don't really let you do that. They're, the stair at this end, you have to go down and then like go back out of the stair and, and go through a corridor again, which could potentially be smoke filled, um, either this way or that way. Um, and then this one you're, you're also trying to you know, exit out through a corridor um, after you've left the stairwell. So there are things like that that are just not really so straightforward to fix. Um, yeah, so classroom, classroom proportions simply can't be fixed because you're dealing with a corridor and an exterior wall. Um, so they're just gonna get elongated maybe if you need to make them larger. Um, and then it's gonna be harder to see. It's just not a, a good situation there. Um, again, we're addressing safety. Safety, we talked about having safety like physical access to the building safety, but again, the stairwells are a, are, are a safety from a fire. Um, all of the stairs need to exit outside. That's current code. So whenever we touch these, if we have that wood framing, et cetera, if we need to bring that up to current code, we're gonna have to do something fairly drastic, and it might require sprinkling the area, which is significantly expensive, or make walls and things or temporary structures or replace portions of the structure to accommodate um, you know, uh, non-combustible materials, things like that, which is, is, is gonna be exceedingly expensive. And then you're still in the same physical orientation and space that's there. Um, and then you have many, many grade level changes in there. Um, of course, the sunken in space, but you go up and down stairs all over the place in that building. I don't know if you've been in there, but it's kind of a maze. Um, Kind of uncomfortable for that access so that also impedes the expansion of classrooms potentially because there's grade changes even within these blue areas you can see right here this office has been dropped down along with the stair so the floor plates are at different levels as well so it's not just as easy as blowing out some of the corridor walls and kind of changing the orientation of the classrooms it's you're kind of stuck there even if you do renovate it so you kind of have to be happy with the physical space of the room and kind of crushing it up is the end result of that. Um, and then, so there's a couple of things though. So when you assess that construction cost of potentially doing that and then potentially doing a build, what benefits do you get if you were to say, I would like to replace those classrooms, here's the count, what would I get out of that? I'd get a more appropriately proportioned building or, or classroom space square. Um, I'd get new mechanicals I would get new um, efficient exterior walls and roof, et cetera, um, finishes, um, 
and potentially even furniture, depending on what SEDs you want to do. Addition for new space that's, that's allowable, we can get furniture loaded in for that. Um, that would be a discussion point, which is a normally unaided piece. So, you know, we're looking to leverage all of that. So, get a new fresh space, get the space sized appropriately. You're kind of fitting in with the way that was done 100 years ago, which is really not the way that instruction is done today. So that's what you're dealing with. Um, and even if you do reconstruct, you're going to have, still have some of those deteriorating effects. Like if you replace the roof and you replace some of the other pieces and parts, you know, the other masonry is going to fail even if you replace where the um, wrinkles are swelling and, and interrupting masonry. You'll constantly have to keep that up to speed, which is kind of what you're going to do on all your buildings. But um, do you want to continue to have that recurring investment in that building? That's the question. So you're working closely with our um, construction managers, the estimators, that are taking a look at the existing space. And you're, in order to bring it up to code and to be able to work within the confines that have just been described, we're going to have a dollar figure. Who's going to come up with the dollars to take us to that point? Then the other option would be, what would it take for us to demolish the building and then create new space? What would that cost be? Because costs need to be considered. And, uh, Mr. Waters shared earlier here the cost of putting together a one campus athletic field might be ideal for all athletic corners, but it might not be realistic in the big picture. So we're going to be doing the same thing. We expect that we're going to have those estimates sometime mid March that we'll be able to come forward and say, okay, here's the cost benefit. It's going to cost us a little bit more money, perhaps, to demolish and rebuild, but the improvements that we'll get in the instructional space and their ability to add these kinds of gymnasiums and other ancillary things would or may outweigh that additional dollar figures. And is that something we wish to absorb? Or do we do the renovations of the existing space at a lower cost and have to live with what we've got for the next 20 or 30 years? Those are the kinds of situations. So, um, Don? If you demolish and rebuild the 1911, do you have to stay in the same footprint? So the question is, if we were to demolish the 1911 and rebuild, do we have to stay within the footprint? We don't. We don't. If, if that is a thing that we're talking about, you could do a number of things. So it starts to cause a Tetris to occur. So we start to take a look at, all right, is the gym on the table? Uh, you know, is any other large space on the table? Because maybe the gym wants to move over here, and then we start to utilize the footprint over here. So we, we don't have to. Um, again, it's, it's all going to come down to a, a calculation. So in any scenario that we do, we're going to develop a plan that makes sense to, to you as the district. It makes sense to, as much as possible that we think it's aidable, as highly aidable as possible. We're going to submit that as a preliminary submission to SED. And they're going to come back and say, we're willing to provide this much aid in writing. So that Andy's less stressed. He sees the number in writing. And then we can make an assessment on what the actual impact locally is, if any. And it could be multi-levels? It could be multi-levels, sure. yeah. And then if that would happen, could you accommodate those new classrooms on that side into that area? You want to sit over here? <laughs> yes, that's, that's exactly <laughs> so the question. what we're going to be doing. <laughs> could it be multiple levels? If so, what are the implications of those kinds of uh, design? Like, as opposed to a single level, what happens if you go I, up? Ideally, Two levels, two to three levels is good. Um, three levels starts to get into some weird accommodations and stairwells, um, but it might make sense depending on you know you know what we lay out here. Um, but yeah, definitely definitely ideal to go up vertically. But you don't you certainly don't want to sprawl with the site you have. Right. Um, so those rooms on that side impede the egress of the, to the field. So that we, could alternate. We, we would always be looking for circulation access. We would always meet code. We have to meet code for any kind of egress from anywhere, really. So um, that could actually narrow it and open up more parking on the, uh, the west side of the building. We, well, no, yeah. well we, have, we have a kitchen cafeteria to accommodate somewhere. We okay. have a gym to accommodate. So we have to look at all those pieces and parts that are involved. Okay. And then not only design it in a way that's good, it's nice, like this works great, but how can we accomplish this in construction periods? Like, can you build something in isolation throughout a school year? 
or, or we just have summer. You know, summer's not going to you know really work for a lot of this. So it's almost like you know those those need to stay up, and you would almost want to build your classrooms in a different location, right. yep. and and then take it down. And if the gym moves, like that's that's kind of what's in my head generally. Jeff, you had a question. Does the state look at the three story? Can that be spread out to a one story community? Sorry, what's that? Is the footprint the same as a three story as a one story? It's really based on teaching stations. So it's classrooms and it's. it's he means, like, could you take this area and say, our, is this what you mean? Like, could you take, say, like a wetland? Yeah, like, can I imagine the third floor or somewhere else and say that's your footprint? No, it, it's really it's the real footprint of the building. That's why it's, it's a discussion story. point. Like, uh, you will certainly be able to it will tr okay. try and sell it that way, but that's not like literally how they view it. Like, we've we've done places where we've actually cantilevered stairwells just so we don't build an addition. You think they would invite it because it would be safer to do it? They, they, they will sometimes listen to logic. I just can't guarantee you that we can get it there. Like, so we'll go do a face to face if it's a negotiating table essentially and, and walk through the logic with them. And if it helps either. You know, schedule, which helps dollars, or um, just how you're functioning throughout the year during a project like this, it might make sense to them to allow for, you know, some expansion somewhere and they, they won't discredit that as, as local share. Other questions from the audience? Anything else on Lionel Tatum you like? So we're kind of nearing the end of our conversation today. Um, a, a couple of things for the next few um, steps in the process. We've gathered a lot of feedback, and we truly appreciate all of the comments that have been made today and throughout the process. And we encourage all of you and your peer groups to continue sending the information to us, because the more information we have, the better our um, proposals to the board will be that reflect what we're getting as a community now. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be seeing the study from our 1911 building. We're gonna get some actual numbers and estimates that we'll be able to present to the board. Uh, we will be receiving a study that's been um, commissioned with the West New York Service Council that will give us a solid report about our enrollment projections, our staffing needs, uh, and some recommendations that um, are consistent with what other schools are doing. We're going to have that report coming to us in the next couple, three weeks. Um, the um, conversations will be ongoing regarding our reconfiguration. We heard today that we left everything as is, this is some options for us. If we were able to look at moving some grade levels, it opens up other opportunities for us. Our architects believe that that concept that was brought forward to us from some of our teachers and our administrators is really cost effective. So by making some of those changes, we may be able to get more for the dollars we're gonna spend and be more efficient, or not. If we decide as a community that we really like the way things are, then that will be part of the, the planning process. Our expectation is that in late March, we're gonna to come to our board and during a work session and spend an hour sharing with them everything that we've learned. We're gonna share with them the concepts that are tend to be going one direction. These are some options for them to consider. The board's gonna weigh back at us and say, we like this, we don't like that, we want you to proceed this way. And then we'll go back to the table and start to hone some of those recommendations. And sometime later this spring, we're then going to be able to come forward and say, okay, board members, we've taken your considerations. We're going to bring it back to the community. You folks will weigh in again and say, yay, nay, we like this, whatever. Ultimately, the board's going to tell us, okay, we're selling on this option or maybe two. And then as Kevin suggested, that information will then be put together and presented to our, the Department of Education and our finance people. They're going to take a look at what What's this gonna cost us in the building units and how long is it gonna take us? We'll have that information. We'll submit it to the Department of Education. I will go with our architects and our engineers and I will defend and try to get every single penny we can from the district to get that approved, to get that in writing. That process gets done. We come back, we say, board, here's where it's at. We stay with the whole project. We come back, dot, dot, dot. We'll do some more information and eventually at some point in the future, we'll put it up to the voters. Here is the scope of our project. It might be one, the first part, it might be a more longer part that's gonna be phased in. A lot of conversations have to take place for that to happen. But ultimately, sometime within the next, I don't wanna put a date on it, but in the next less than a decade, 
What port stuff? <laughs> 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 That's the safe number, Andy? Because you, you hate when I put dates out there. So we'll be putting something out to the voters. And then they'll ultimately say yay or nay as to where we can proceed. And then the projects we make. Okay? Do you have any other questions that we can answer for this evening? Okay, time to check your sump pumps. Make sure you get home safe. And uh, thank you everyone for coming out tonight.